Hey everyone, so I'm making this video on writing and balancing of chemical equations because a lot of people had been asking for it because, you know, considering the mocks are near. So let's get started. Writing and balancing of chemical equations needs one thing which is really important and that is being able to write the chemical formula of elements and compounds obviously. Because you're not going to be able to write the chemical equation in the first place without that. So in O-level chemistry, we only have writing of the chemical formula of binary compounds. Now these could be binary covalent compounds or these could be binary ionic compounds which have two ions in them. So two elements or two ions and that's the main idea of being able to write the formula. For example, we have three different compounds which is magnesium chloride, potassium oxide and aluminium bromide. They have two elements each. Magnesium from being group two has a charge of plus two and chloride is in group 7, so it has a charge of minus 1. We swap the charges so that magnesium gets a 1 from chloride, and chloride gets a 2 from magnesium's charge. It becomes MgCl2. Potassium oxide has K with a plus 1 and O with a minus 2. So potassium gets a 2 because of the oxide's charge, and oxide gets nothing because potassium is plus 1. We don't write that. In aluminium bromide, aluminium makes a charge of plus 3, Bromide makes a charge of minus 1. So aluminium gets nothing because we don't write a 1, but bromide gets a 3 because aluminium has it. Now when we talk about the binary ionic compounds, we have a cation and anion together over here. So let's recall the common cations which have the plus charge on them, which are metals from group 1. So like lithium, sodium, potassium have a charge of plus 1 on them. Magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium are in group 2, so they lose 2 electrons and become a charge of plus 2. Aluminium is in group 3, so it loses 3 electrons, become plus 3. And in transition elements, we have a lot of transition elements like zinc, copper, iron 2, iron 3, lead and silver. From the anion side, we have group 7 anions which are known as the halides. Then in group 7, they gain electrons and they become minus 1 charge, group 7. Fluoride, chloride, bromide, iodide. Oxide is minus 2 from group 6. Sulfide is minus 2 from group 6. They gain 2 electrons. From group 5, we have a nitrogen atom, which gains 3 electrons and becomes nitride, ending with a DE. In the polyatomic ion side, we have hydroxide, which has a negative 1 charge overall. Nitrate has a negative 1 charge overall, which is NO3. Sulfate has a negative 2 charge overall and carbonate is CO3 with an overall charge of minus 2. So we need to be able to make formula when we have these over here. Like we have six different compounds over here and we try to get, write their chemical formula. For example, sodium sulfate has Na with a plus and SO4 with a minus 2. So Na gets a 2 from sulfate. Sulfate gets nothing because, because Na is already plus 1. We don't write the 1 for sulfate. So Na2SO4. In potassium hydroxide, K has a charge of plus 1, OH has a charge of minus 1. We cancel them very simply and we conveniently get KOH. In copper 2 nitrate, copper has a charge of plus 2 and nitrate we know as the overall minus 1. So copper gets nothing from nitrate because we don't write 1. But nitrate gets a 2 from copper because the charge of copper is 2. We put a bracket and then we put a 2 outside the nitrate. In iron 3 sulfate, the 3 means iron has a charge of plus 3, sulfate means SO4 with a charge of minus 2. So iron gets a 2 from the sulfate, sulfate gets a 3 from the iron, and we put a bracket outside the sulfate. In zinc oxide, we have zinc with a charge of plus 2, oxide with a charge of minus 2, and we simply get ZNO. It becomes zinc oxide. Aluminium is in group 3, so it becomes a plus 3 charge. Sulfate is always minus 2. So aluminium gets a 2 from the sulfate. Sulfate gets a 3 from the aluminium. And that's how we get Al2 as a fourth rise. Now let's, try to, let's practice some chemical equations. The first says iron 2 carbonate, which means iron 2 and CO3 with a minus 2. So the formula becomes FeCO3. Iron 2 carbonate decomposes which means reacts alone, does not react with anything, just heats up, breaks down, to produce, which means the products are iron 2 oxide, 
iodine with a plus 2, oxide with a minus 2. So we get FeO as iodine 2 oxide and means a plus carbon dioxide, which is the other product. So FeCO3 is the reactant. It produces FeO, which is iron 2 oxide and carbon dioxide. This is the first equation. In the second equation, it says sulfuric acid neutralizes. Neutralizes is just another word for reacting. Reacts with potassium hydroxide. We know potassium hydroxide is KOH because K is plus 1, OH is minus 1, KOH. To give means the products are potassium sulfate, which means K with a plus 1, sulfate with a minus 2, so K2SO4, because potassium gets a 2 from the sulfate, and water. While we write the equation KOH, K2SO4, and H2O, we notice that the potassium atoms are not balanced, and also the hydrogens, by the way. There are two potassium atoms on the right side, but one on the left. So we need to put a bigger 2 before the KOH to balance it. And now we count the number of hydrogens, we need to do something else. Because on the left side, we can notice there are two hydrogens in the sulfuric and overall two hydrogens in the potassium hydroxide. But overall, only two hydrogens in the water on the right side. So we put a very bigger two before the water to balance it. Now the two twos are four, so it's balanced. Third equation says copper deposits, which means copper is the product. They can sometimes call the product first. So copper deposits when copper to nitrate, which means copper and nitrate together. We, we make the formula later. Solution is added with a piece of pure iron. Iron means Fe. Iron 3 nitrate is a byproduct. Iron 3 nitrate means Fe 3 plus and nitrate. So the formula becomes Fe NO3 and you know thrice because the charge of iron goes with the nitrate. So Fe NO3 thrice. We write copper as the product, copper nitrate as the reactant. Iron is also one of the reactants and iron 3 nitrate was one of the products. So copper nitrate plus iron gives you pure copper and iron 3 nitrate which means Fe NO3 thrice. Now we can notice that NO3 is common on both sides. So we consider NO3 together. If you notice, in the left side, there are two NO3s, two nitrates. I'm counting the NO3 together. And on the right side, there are three nitrates. So we can't just put a two on one side. We can notice that the nitrates can become six on the right side if we put a two. And on the left side, it can become a six if we put a three. So we cross multiply. Now there are six nitrates on both sides. The copper atoms can be balanced by putting a three on the right side. So three coppers and three coppers over here. And ions can be balanced by a simple two. Let's do this equation. It says chlorine, which is Cl2, bubbled through aluminum bromide. Bubble through means it's reacting with aluminum bromide. Now aluminum bromide is Al3 plus and Br minus one. So the formula becomes AlBr3. Produces aluminum chloride, which means AlCl together. So Al is plus three, Cl is minus one. It becomes AlCl3 and bromine. Guys, remember bromine is Br2, chlorine is Cl2. These are not atoms. So chlorine Cl2 plus AlBr3, which is aluminum bromide to produce AlCl3, which is aluminum chloride and bromine, Br2. Now to balance it, we can notice that there are three bromine atoms on the left and two bromines on the right. We do a similar thing for chlorine and there are again two and three. We can simply cross multiply to get a six on both sides. So two before the aluminum bromide and three before the bromine makes it six bromine on both sides. Similarly for chlorine, a three before the Cl2 and a two before the aluminum chloride would make it six chlorine on both sides. Now you can notice that six chlorine on the left and two threes are six, so six chlorine on the right. Similarly, for bromines. This equation says ammonia, which is NH3, combusts, combusts means burn, in excess oxygen to produce nitrogen dioxide and water vapors. So NH3 plus oxygen gives us 
NO2 which is nitrogen dioxide and water vapors. Now you can notice that there are three hydrogens on the left hand side as a part of ammonia but two hydrogens on the right side as a part of the water molecule. Simply we just cross multiply two before the ammonia to make it six hydrogen atoms and three before the water to make it six hydrogen atoms. Now they are balanced. The nitrogen atoms are two on the left side so we put a two before the NO2 and now it becomes balanced as nitrogen atoms are two on both sides. Lastly, we need to balance the oxygen atoms. So we count how many oxygen atoms are on the right side. Two molecules of NO2 have four atoms of oxygen and three molecules of water have three, which is total of seven. Seven oxygen on the right side. So we put a seven over two with the O2 because you can notice there is already a two with the oxygen. So we put a seven over two, we can write fractions, it's not a problem. But if you're not comfortable writing fractions, you multiply the whole equation by two. So it becomes four ammonia instead of two. It becomes seven oxygen instead of seven over two, four NO2s and six waters. You can write this equation this way, or you can write it in the previous way, like two ammonias, seven over two oxygens, two nitrogen dioxides and three waters.